Hello everybody, this is Dolphin Data Lab Techlix support team. Now this video will teach you how to recover the NOS data from Spyglass, Palmer and Charger families. Anyway, there is some uh, difference among these families. So we will focus on Palmer and Charger families first. And for Spyglass, users can learn more from the Dolphin official website case study channel. Now we can see this article and users can get a lot of details on how to recover the NOS data from these families. And today we can check the detailed steps on how to get NOS data back from the Palmer and Charger families. Now we can see this kind of the PCB numbers. These are from uh, the Spyglass families and these PCB numbers belong to the Palmer and the Charger families. Now let's check how to get NOS data from the Palmer and the Charger families. So the first we need to learn what types of hard drives belong to the Palmer and the Charger families. First one, we can check from the name, we can see the PCB number 83065 WD, this is model number in WD20SPZX. Next, we can see this is the PCB number 83066 or 83069 and model number is WD10SPZX or similar model number and we can find the PCB number to match the families. Next we can check this is another type of hard drives which is more and more popular in the market. Now we can see the PCB number is 83077 and its model number is early starting with WD20EZAZ. When users get this kind of hard drives, the PCB is locked and users cannot read ROM, cannot write ROM and cannot back up and write the firmware modules. That means without unlock the PCB users can do lots to repair the firmware corruptions if the firmwares are damaged. So how to deal with this kind of hard drives? To recover the lost data from this kind of hard drives, it is very necessary for users to buy the unlocked PCBs. Anyway, there are many types of PCB suppliers in the market. However, the only suggested and recommended PCB supplier is from the HDD Head Tools Factory or Dolphin Data Lab. Because these PCBs are uniquely prepared to unlock those PCBs and it works 100% and users get a quality guarantee. Now we can check the official website for these unlocked PCBs. So this is the HDD Head Tools Factory official website. And we can click the dollar and unlock PCBs. Here users can find out the single purchase link for each unlocked PCB or users can find out the package prices and offers for different PCBs compilation. So it's very convenient for users to get the best PCB quality at the best prices from HDD Head Tools factory. So the fourth step is to buy the unlocked PCBs to unlock the hard drives to access to the firmware error and ROM. Now let's check the next step. After users get the unlocked PCBs, users need to use the 
ROM chip pin reader, all users need to solder the original ROM chip to the unlock PCB. Anyway, for this kind of unlock PCBs, users are suggested to use the pin reader. Why? Because with the pin reader, users can protect the ROM chip. Because any kind of soldering may more or less damage or decrease the quality of the ROM chip and this will cause some unstable data transfer to the ROM contents. So if users have this ROM chip pin reader it's undoubtedly that users will get a higher success rate to unlock the hard drives and access to the firmware error. So with this pin reader, users can read and write ROM without solder the ROM chip off. Now let's check this one. So this is original hard drives and this is the original PCB. Please note that the original PCB is locked. This is MCU locked. That means users cannot use software or any firmware repair tools to unlock it. The only solution is to swap with one unlock PCB. Now we can see that the engineer is reading the original ROM chip, just read the original ROM contents. Now this is the chip pin reader software. Users use the F7 read. Other users put the pins to the ROM pins properly and within the software, the users just simply click read or simply click F7 on the keyboard. And here in the log window, users can find out the ROM will be read at high speed. We can see from the log window here, for this Palmer or charger families, we can say that the ROM has been read successfully within just four seconds. It's very fast to get the ROM read out. So after the original ROM is read successfully, what to do next? Now we can see this is an unlock PCB. After users read the original ROM from this original PCB, and users need to write the original ROM to the unlock PCB. Also, when users are writing the original ROM to the unlock PCB, users just need to go to the pin reader software and simply click auto program. That is the F9 on the keyboard and within not window and we can see that the program will erase the ROM chip and verify and then write the ROM contents to the unlock ROM chip. So after writing the original ROM to the unlock PCB, now Users just install the unlock PCB to the original hard drive. Then we connect this pension hard drive with unlock PCB to the DFL SRP data recovery hardware, like this picture is showing to you. We can see from this picture that the DFL SRP hardware can connect to two hard drives to SATA hard drives at the same time and in the middle and users can connect one ID hard drive. Anyway, this is the DFSRP hardware. After users connect the pension hard drives to the DFSRP hardware, then the next step, users can open the DFLWD firmware repair program.
an enters program. After we install the unlock PCB to the pension hard drives, we can see that right now the firmware error is accessible. But before doing anything to the firmware error, users need to mock UA writing. Why do we need to do this one? After we knock the UA writing, then the hard drive will not write anything to the dynamic translator that is the module 190. This is to protect. No further change will be made on the possible modules which will affect the data error. So it's very important for users to learn after the PCB swap, users need to knock the UA writing. Okay, after we doing this one, then we start to back up the ROM. After users enter the DFLWD from repair program, users can find out the menu ROM operations. So users just simply go to this menu and click read the ROM and then users can read the ROM successfully. It's very easy to do this one. After backup the ROM, we can check the modules. All the firmware modules allow available for users to work on. So the next step is to backup these firmware modules. After the firmware modules are backup, users need to go to the firmware operations and to read this SA. To read this SA as one file and all the firmware modules will be stored in this SA file. This one is very important because for these Palmer and Charger families, some module size are very big. If users don't back up this SA and sometimes due to the voltage unstability, it means sometimes some modules may not be backed up completely. So users can try to extract the firmware modules from this SA file. That is why we always suggest to users to back up the SA as one file. Next, after they back up the SA, users can test all the firmware modules to find out which firmware modules are damaged. Within the DFLWD firmware repair program, and users get a lot of powerful firmware repair functions. After find out which firmware modules are corrupted, then users can repair these damaged modules accordingly. Next, after we fix the firmware issues within the DFWD firmware repair program, then we need to open the DFLDDP data recovery program without power off the pension hard drives. Then users can set up a new project for imaging this pension hard drive or extracting lost data directly. So these are all the detailed steps to recover the lost data back from the Palmer and Charter families. And later, Dorfman Data Lab will create more helpful videos on how to recover lost data from the new types of hard drives, whether it's Seagate or Western Digital or other types of hard drives. And we are confident that with Dorfman Data Lab data recovery tools, users will get higher and higher success rate in data recovery.
and we wish all the best to all data recovery engineers. Thank you for watching this video.